Hi, everyone. So quickly, uh, I won't take a lot of time. I'm from a Western company, and we are supporting our customer uh, around the digital transformation. And uh, I've been working there for 10 years now. Um, I've been working on the MNA topic, the IT transformation in Europe, US, Mexico, and now in Singapore since uh, six months uh, for a large scale company. And um, uh, we start this, uh, this, uh, this speech by uh, giving you a bit of feedback of the 2023 DevOps market. Um, so, in a nutshell, what I have seen uh, so far is that my customers are saying uh, it's a chaotic environment with a huge workload where the teams are always, always late and over budgets, and the releases are lacking quality and cybersecurity. In fact, when we are looking in, in depth, there are several topics that are emerging. So, the delivery, delivery pace is an issue, meaning that the business wants to release a lot of releases on digital products, releasing new features, and the IT teams have some issue to follow that pace. The second part is regarding global consistency, and we can see that there are sometimes scope forgotten. There are operation and quality of services that are not at the right level, and same for the quality of the run. There are regression issue between the releases, etc. Regarding the target operating model and the delivery operating model, we can see that there are sourcing inconsistency between the team, between the, the, the delivery team, I mean. There are some sizing error in terms of strategic workforce planner, in order to see, okay, I want to have uh, 10 uh, front-end developers, I want to have two uh, back-end developers, and sometimes the capacity planning between the team are not the, the right ones. There are some uh, poor separation if inefficiency due to the legacy of IT organization uh, created in the 90s. And finally, there are some budget management principles incoherence uh, between the development team and the operation one. Regarding the sourcing strategy quickly, uh, I've seen there are some inconsistency between the contracts and there are some issue by asking uh, your uh, outsource developer, for instance, to uh, deliver faster because they have waterfall contracts. And here, it's the most common issue that I've seen, and also the service level agreement part. Finally, uh, there are the human resources and psychosocial hazards that we can face uh, on, the, on the, your organization, on which that you have overload, turnover, and most common stuff that are coming now, and mostly on the Singaporean market, it's to keep and retain your talents in the company. And um, in Weststone, we consider that there are five maturity levels that pave your way on the road to Agile and DevOps. So I will go quickly on that one because I think the DevOps part will be the, the next slide it must, must, must be focused on. So first level is the tailored one on which that everything is manually. So it's the one that you, you face like between the 90s and the 20s, yeah, 2000, sorry. The second one is the Agile project. So some of the application you started to develop it on an Agile way. Then there were the Agile application on which you started to push the dev and the ops working together. The Agile IS, it's a bundle of application working all together in the Agile mode. And finally, innovation first, it's to, to let the biz work near the dev and the ops. But when we present that, the most common mistake that I can see is Sorry, is that when we are talking about DevOps, most of my, my customers are thinking about this first part. DevOps for most of our customers in Western is only agile organization and collaboration culture. But in fact, DevOps is much more than that. It's for us, CI CD pipeline, infrastructure as code and application architecture are the cornerstones of the DevOps methodology. So everyone knows the agile organization and the collaboration culture because it has been brainwashed um, and um, most common advisory consulting team are doing that. But the three other pillars are very interest, interesting because uh, you need to consider that to be able to have fast delivery, you must consider the infrastructure as code as part of it, meaning that you need to be to become an infrastructure code broker for your application in order to reduce at 
most as possible the time to market, the time to deliver any underlying line platform and services from an IT standpoint. I will give you an example. For instance, how long do you wait to have a new virtual machine, a new VLAN to be created if you are working on the legacy services and not on infrastructure as code services? You need to ask a ticket on your, on your ITSM, you need to wait for the team to be reassigned, and then you need to receive the service. With infrastructure as code, you aim to reduce as a service, meaning that it's click and you got the service right, right away. Regarding the CI/CD pipeline, it's the way to automate your code delivery from code repository toward your production in the fastest automated industrialized way. If we talk about DevSecOps, it's including also the security part on your CI/CD pipeline. Finally, the last pillar is the cloud native and modular application. So it's good to have the tooling. It's good to have the infrastructure as code. But if you have only have one big jar file, so one monolithic application, it's like asking an elephant to break your eggs in the morning. It's very efficient, but not accurate. Uh, so my point here regarding the cloud native and modular application is the goal here is to work with the architect to work with the business to redesign your modular and microservices uh, uh, architecture in order to be scalable, in order to enhance the fact to push small features into your CI CD pipeline, triggering infrastructure as code uh, as much as you can, and finally integrate cybersecurity on small pieces. So at the end of the day, microservices and modular application is having the same application, but breaking into pieces that leave opportunity for the uh, IT organization to push it faster, easier, and uh, in an industrialized and automated way. You can see on the bottom part of the slide that uh, the market trends uh, are the cloud offer. So the main cloud editor on the market follows the DevOps principles. And you can see, for instance, if we can, AW, we can take uh, AWS, for instance, they propose DevOps with a CI CD pipeline infrastructure as code. So all of the cloud providers now on the market are following uh, and align on the DevOps principles. So meaning that they are full up, uh, up, uh, APIs, sorry, <coughs> to ease automation and industrialization. They have services enabling modern uh, architecture uh, for application. They do propose transversal services uh, for uh, the run of your platform from monitoring standpoint, security, cost monitoring, etc. So it's opened the door for FinOps, for instance. And finally, there are easy integration with best of breeds uh, DevOps tooling. So from the uh, infrastructure as code, SCCM, uh, build engine, etc. Now, why a showcase journey is relevant for any IT organization? So I will go in detail so how to scope it just after, but now wh why it's relevant. You will create a seamless team involved business technical cybersecurity profile. You will focus the team on long-term product, but with short-term milestones uh, to achieve, and thus you will limit the relative efforts to be done, and you will take credit for the showcase, and you will promote the showcase results and the, the people involved in it in order to create your new DevOps a hero or champion. And finally, and this one is very important, <laughs> you will find more easily the related budget for, for developing it. So now, uh, in order to scope uh, your showcase, how to select the right project to be launched. So yeah, there are several steps. On, uh, the first one is which projects. So you need to consider that on your application landscape, there are uh, the project complexity and the needs of instability uh, to be considered. I will give you an example. Um, if you are working in the banking sector, uh, everyone knows mainframe. Mainframe does not need to change every day. So it does not need to be instable. So you need to, uh, to have it uh, the most CD as possible so it's not a good candidate for DevOps. Regarding the project complexity here, it's to consider that is it something uh, difficult to develop? Is it highly uh, linked to, uh, to any other application, or I'm working on a very standard uh, technology with, with a standalone application. So here, the goal is to take the more unstable application, like a mobile application, for instance, and the less complex one in order to ensure you have the best array in there. 
then which application to be considered there. So there is a technical compatibility to be considered in order to, uh, to have uh, the, the best application compatible to, uh, to, to go on the DevOps path uh, to provide the, the best compatibility on it. Now, I already talked about it, it it's uh, how to prioritize. So here it's uh, to have the best ratio be between the benefits and the inter investment. And finally, there is a target operating model to, to be uh, discussed in order to uh, decide what to do, do you want to do on uh, development and production between internal and external. There are several uh, assignments and uh, topics to be launched in priority. So showcasing several applications, the one relevant to the business, creating a CA for CI/CD infrastructure as code could be a good opportunity for you because it's something that will be relevant in the, the incoming future. The more often you will have, you will use your CI/CD pipeline, the more often you will use the infrastructure as code. And finally, to transform the application technically incompatible into compatible ones to grow your ecosystem. Quickly on this one, because I disclaimed several topics, we can defer two main uh, applications. So the one that are devosizable and the one that are not. So the one that are devosizable are the evolutive one, the, uh, the one that have uh, some front end, so a lo lot of interface ma manual with customer, either internal or end user. The one that have low flows, meaning standalone, the one technically compatible, and the one that are visible to the management and to the business. And on the control, uh, the one that are not devosizable is totally the, 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 the mirror here. So the legacy one, a lot of backend, a lot of multi flows, a lot of uh, te technical incompatibility, and that are not known for the business and the top management. Now, uh, how to create your DevOps A team for this showcase? So the goal here is not leaving the way people are doing DevOps right now. The goal here is to bring the tech guy working with the dev and the, the ops. And when I say tech guys, it's the people working on the platform, on the underlying platform, working on infrastructure as code, working on the CI CD pipeline in order to start and induce the change within the team. And very important part, this uh, showcase agile team must be independent in order to avoid uh, to be influenced by the management or any uh, legacy uh, organization. Then you can compete this team with SMEs, experts that came from outside the company, either from outsourcing or recruitment. Then you onboard your uh, team on the showcase uh, that you would like to launch and promote on one or several facets of DevOps, meaning that you can take an application and say, okay, this one is monolithic, I want to transform it first, uh, the, 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 the monolithic ap application toward uh, microservices, and I want to use only a part of the CI/CD pipeline in order not to have everything complex at the beginning, using uh, new infrastructure as code, uh, for instance, and after uh, three months, you increase the complexity. Then you coordinate the other project DevOps if you have launched several ones at the same time with other teams, and you might need to reshuffle the team at some point from a HR career point of view or from a skills point of view. Finally, the, the last part is to increase the audit, the cybersecurity, the IT standards, and the viability of the environments, and then you repeat again, again. So in a nutshell, your showcase could be like, uh, if you are working in banking, for instance, uh, a B2C application for a customer uh, on which that you'd like to promote this mobile application uh, for your business with a bunch of features that, that require several interface with the, uh, the end user. Then you, you want to develop it or replatform it, for instance, uh, with uh, microservices using a CI CD pipeline and having infrastructure as code in order to uh, reach, I don't know, one release a day uh, to, to push new features or to push new version every day. Here, uh, the showcase you can say to your management, I'd like to have a uh, three to four months uh, showcase on which I will have this application totally replatformed uh, from uh, monolithic to microservices and having the KPIs, the following KPIs that, are, that, that you can define with them. And then after the three, four months, you can share the results 
uh, having the 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 the, the, the most uh, the most uh, task completed, and if you need an extra time, you can ask uh, to develop something extra to uh, have any other uh, features promoted there. So um, after the showcase, what's next? So as you know, because it's a very ongoing uh, transformation, DevOps. Uh, it's an iterative approach by making DevOps a subject of adoption and skill development. So this one, everyone know, know, knows it. Then the second one, it's a bit tricky because you must dedicate teams, architecture, and uh, environments for the showcase. This one, uh, low to no company are doing it. I think it's a mistake because uh, by doing it, you are able to get for working like as a startup by creating a dedicated environment for that. Then you must uh, facilitate the team adoption as they will the processes and tools they have tried to implement and test. And uh, by considering the IT agile journey transformation to be tailored in the beginning, meaning that most of the company here in Singapore market have launched well, years ago this DevOps transformation, their cloud transformation. However, when I'm talking with uh, my customer here, I can see that they are lacking some industrialization within the CI/CD pipeline. They are lacking some standardization on the CI on the CI/CD CI/CD tooling, for instance. And finally, there are some lead time to create a CI/CD pipeline to support a new application team to be developed. So here, you can see it's because the worked only on the dev and on the ops part and not on the tuning so the it at agile part so my point here is that the it organization so the geek people in the organization must be, must work as a team with the devops team and finally so applying the devops principle on eligible application this this one is important because a lot of the uh, application landscape in the Singaporean customer here that I can see a lot of it are on the cloud certainly but on EAS application so very legacy way of working as you had the application in data center or data room so my point here is not to jeopardize everything it's to take benefit of what you have but start on I mean, one application, two applications, three applications, and you already did it, maybe think if it was the good way of doing it. And you can start it again, for instance, with a compatible standalone application that uh, will fit for a showcase. And on some environments, meaning on your dev environment, on your set environment, your project. And then you, can, you will be able to spread a to an DevOps culture within your company leveraging this showcase by improving it using the showcase post-mortem and industrializing it is a sustainable approach. Again, the sustainable approach is clearly missing in the, the company here, what one that I've seen, uh, because there are no too low uh, tooling from a CICD pipeline or infrastructure as a point of view. Um, then, I think it's the, the last part of it, you can extend this showcase to all target environments and defining a standard deployment pattern and principles. Here I can tell you what I have seen and what I've done in the US and in Europe, is that we create a dedicated environment in order, in order to have an end-to-end -end DevOps environment from business to development to operation to the IT, so the underlying platform and services, and we moved iteratively the different application monolithic to replatform one on the new environment with a dedicated operating model that brought value to the business. Well, I will conclude here that uh, DevOps and, and in an agile way to quickly, quickly deliver value and share results to the business, uh, but also to mitigate the risk. So DevOps is agile, so is implementing the DevOps at scale. I have five minutes now with you guys uh, in order to answer any question that you can have. 
and have a bunch of appendices also if you need to go further in detail. Thank you. So when you're talking about dependency, are you talking about dependency within the application or with other application? So within the application, there are several approaches for doing it. So there is the uh, code retro or reverse engineering in order to define the three main layers, which is UI, UX, front-end, back-end. Then there are common uh, features on the front-end and the back-end that you can rely on. So there are several patterns of standard monolithic application in order to match as possible what would be the microservices one. So my, my, my point here is that you can have a 20 days to reverse engineering the application and then map as much as possible the current features in it to uh, what could be a containerized application in the target. Okay? No, it's uh, architecture. It's design. It's, it's just design. Yeah, the, you need to have this uh, this document in order to start creating a low level target. Because if not, it's like creating from scratch in your application. Any other question? So, uh, if I understood the question, is you are asking that, asking the, 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 the leader of the market to work on that kind of uh, development activities? Leader ah, leader in the company. Okay. Ah, okay, the middle management. Okay, so, to, so it's an incentive question. Okay, so uh, regarding incentive, there are three ways that I was uh, handling that topic. The first one is from the HR standpoint. So you must talk to the, the leader of the company in order to review uh, the, the goals and the objectives of the middle management. And here, you can incentive the, the, the middle management to work on the, on the showcase or to support the showcase by putting it under the, their goals. Because at the end of the day, if they are not supportive, no bonus, no money, and so on. So the second topic is to uh, promote the HR career path for middle management regarding DevOps uh, in order to be fully ensured that they are working to develop their skills also on that. And finally, the last topic is to uh, create uh, an incentive around, um, it's what I, I called, it's like a, a promote the success. So you put in front some of people the, the top man the middle management in order to take benefit of what is done for that. So it's free way of answering it re really related to HR. Okay. Any other question? Yeah. Very nice expression, by the way. Is it, um, it's mostly like a front end, more or less, in, in what you stated. In the, from my personal experience, I see DevOps as well more on the back end side because I'm, I'm more from the tech. So when I see a front end, I always want to do an A B test, right? Yeah. And it, doing A B testing is something that takes time and is not trivially DevOps sizable. And so for me, things are much easier to put into a proper CI, CD, uh, 
DevOps process on the backend side instead on the frontend side? What is your stance? So I was talking about the showcase. So I, it was very showcase oriented. But you're right. You're right. Uh, I was very showcase oriented, meaning that uh, it's easier for for front end application like a CRM, for instance, compared to say, okay, let's go for an ERP. So no, I, I, my, at the end of the day, yeah, you will have some backend application that bring a lot of money that will be very relevant to uh, to be on the uh, on the uh, microservices application to. Use your CICD pipeline. So let's back to speaker again. Thanks a lot. <laughs>